Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I've got another pyramid tutorial for you because I know how popular my last ones were. You loved them so much I decided to make a new one and this time we've got a forest theme. It's a winter wonderland. So if you would like to see how I made this beautiful pyramid please stay tuned and enjoy. <music> Okay, so your first step is to dust the outside of your large pyramid mould with some talcum powder or baby powder, any kind of powder really, and it just stops it sticking to the support that you're going to be putting it into. Because I have found that you get quite a lot of um, like a vacuum effect and it just doesn't want to come out. So I like to dust it with something first. I drew out a template on some baking paper, as you can see here, just showing the different levels that I had planned for my pyramid. And that way I can pop it in there in the side, as you can see, and it shows me where I want each level to go up to. And it really helps me to not get carried away with my layers of resin and forget what I'm up to. And then you need to make sure that your uh, mould is perfectly level with your spirit level and put some supports in if necessary and the resin which I have here that I'm using for the first two thick layers is a deep cast resin and it's quite important to check that the resin you're using is okay for doing thick layers if you're going to do a pyramid like mine because these are th very deep layers and if your resin is the wrong kind you're going to run into problems with it so make sure it's okay for deep casting the resin i'm using is called deep cast resin and it's made by elichem and it's two parts resin to one part hardener and i've mixed it thoroughly and there i'm just adding my blue pigment and mixing very very thoroughly again so now you're going to see that I'm mixing up some white pigment and what I wanted to, to do was use a pipette to in kind of inject some white into the blue to make some nice clouds the trouble is that with this deep cast resin it's so thin which is a good thing um, because the bubbles have lots and lots of time to just let themselves out and you don't need to apply lots of heat. But because it's so thin, it takes a long time to cure and it stays thin for a long time. And I put my clouds in with the pipette as planned and they, the white didn't stay as I wanted it to. It just dispersed into the blue. And to be quite honest, I love... The finished result but it didn't give me the results I wanted. Next time if I do this again what I will do is let this get really nice and thick and go back to it probably the next day because it takes a couple of days for this deep cast resin in these cool temperatures to cure. So after a day next time I will go back and add the white for the clouds and hopefully because the resin will be a lot thicker then when I put some white in it will stay in its cloud shapes I hope that makes sense but I've left it in to show you what I did anyway because at the end of the day it made a beautiful effect I really love the end result it's just not what I wanted Right, so when I make pyramid lamps, I like to have a cavity in the inside of the pyramid to put the lights into. There's two reasons for that. One reason is if you, ha if you have a large cavity inside, you're using about two thirds of the resin that you would, would have been using without the cavity. So you're saving resin, but also it means that you can take your lights in and out if forever, if 
you know, there's any reason why you need to replace the lights, maybe the lights break or, you know, these things don't last forever. The resin pyramids would last for years and years, but the LED lights wouldn't necessarily last as long as the pyramid. So I don't like to put the lights into resin because then they're there forever and once they've gone, your pyramid won't light up. So that is why I do it. I have seen some people make resin pyramids and they do immerse the lights into resin and that does work. It's just I don't necessarily think that that's a good idea. So that's just my opinion. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I've just cut the end off my water bottle. I started off with a knife and I'm just tidying it up a little bit with some scissors. And it's not... I've got to say now, it's not the perfect bottle for this job. It's all I had though. The reason I'm not keen on this bottle is all those ridges. If you can get a smooth bottle and it fits the lights and the um, battery pack that you want to put inside it, then that's the bottle for you. Uh, but this is the only one I had that would fit my battery pack inside as well because that's the main thing. Your battery pack needs to be able to fit into the size of the bottle. I like to lay it flat so that it's just at the opening and not visible through the pyramid. Right, the next job will be to block up that small hole that's going in the bottom where you took the top of the bottle off. That that hole needs blocking and it needs to be completely blocked. You don't want any resin getting into that cavity. So I'm using cling film rolled into a ball. I'm popping it in the end of the bottle, then sealing all that up with hot, hot glue, you know, from a glue gun. Um, it worked, but I wasn't happy when I took it out. It was hard to get that cling film out. So next time I probably wouldn't use the kitchen film. I would probably try um, maybe a ball of tin foil. Um, I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's something that I'm just not thinking of that would work perfectly and it'll come to me. Uh, anyway, this did work. The cling film worked. It was just really hard to get out. And there I am just sealing it up with the hot melt glue. And then that will go into my pyramid. Right, the next layer is probably the layer that you're all excited about because it turned out looking really fantastic. And it's the trees. And what I did for the trees is I went out into the garden to see what I had that would look like little miniature trees. And I found... The old hydrangea, last year's hydrangea, which luckily didn't get pruned back. I'm so glad that I'm a bad gardener because all the dead foliage was still there, all nicely dried out for me. Excuse my wonky filming. I was trying to do it with just holding the camera and getting the uh, <laughs> thing for you. Anyway, so yeah, I found the old hydrangea and when I brushed off the old dead leaves I realized that it really did look like little miniature trees so I took loads and loads of the dead foliage from there and got rid of all the dead leaves and ended up with my lovely wintry trees. So I decided to put the trees in before I put the bottle in just to make it a lot easier because it would have been hard to squeeze them down the side of the bottle once it was in. So I'm just arranging them all around the edges. The first layer of resin at this stage isn't actually completely um, cured. It's still a little bit soft. And I did that partly because I'm impatient, but partly because I also wanted the two layers to kind of merge together. I didn't want a definite line between the two layers that two layers I wanted the clear resin that's going around the trees to blend in nicely with that blue that's above now that the trees are in place the bottle goes in and then the next layer of resin 
Once the resin was in, I realised that the bottle was going to start floating to the top. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I put a bottle of, uh, it was just a bottle of varnish that I put inside of there just to, because it was the heaviest thing that I could find quickly um, to weigh it down and stop it floating to the top. Again, for this layer, I'm using the deep cast resin. I'm starting off with just a little bit of that same blue as before. And then just, well, it's basically just to help the colours merge together. And then I'm going to put some clear in as well. I will be wiping the sides of the bottle too, because we don't want those drips that are down the side of the bottle. So it's the next day and it's just time now to snip away the little bits of tree that are sticking out. The uh, resin is still, un it's not ready yet, it's not hard, it's still soft and tacky. Like I've said already, it does take a long time to cure this deep cast resin. So I'm being very careful with my snippers. I'm also being careful because they're quite sharp and I don't want to damage the mould. I'm using just little wire snippers because I thought they were quite handy for this job. But you could use some scissors, whatever you feel you've got good control over really. Right, so once I'd tr um, trimmed down those trees it was time to do my layer of snow. I decided on the winter theme because obviously the trees don't have leaves, they, they were very bare, so I thought, oh, let's make it a winter theme. So I decided the next layer would be snow. And I'm so, so pleased. I had, it was kind of a an accident, but it was the best accident ever. <laughs> um, I poured this white layer onto the previous layer before the previous layer was cured. It wasn't hard like, a, like I've just said, it was still soft. And I got the most amazing um, texture of the snow when, you, when it was finished. And I looked at the top of that layer, it was, it was all bumpy, like fresh snow on the ground. And so, yeah, that works out absolutely perfectly. I bet if I tried it again, uh, I wouldn't manage to, to do that the same, but it's just one of those happy accidents. I'm adding some uh, white glitter to my white resin and I've made the resin um, a very opaque white with my pigment. I didn't want it to be transparent at all, I wanted a nice solid colour. And the main reason for that was because some of those uh, branches, the trees were still sticking out um, from the resin it was hard to trim it down all the way so I thought I'll make the layer nice and thick white so you can't see those bits poking through that I couldn't quite trim down and yeah it worked out so well I was so pleased with it probably my favorite part of the pyramid is the way the snow has gone the, te the texture of the snow on the surface <laughs> Right, for the next layer I'm using Total Cast again. I used Total Cast resin for the last layer. It cures a lot quicker, so it's a much faster process from, from now on. Uh, yeah, so I'm using Total Cast again. I've got it in a warm water bath there because I forgot to warm it up. I normally um, warm up the two parts of the resin separately before, at, at the moment, at this time of year, just because my house is really cold, I'm a bit stingy with the heating and we avoid putting the heating on until we need to. So it was really cold. So I've put it in a warm water bath because it was really too bubbly. And the problem with the with using that plastic bottle for the cavity is you can't use your heat gun too much because it just melts the bottle. I'm adding some brown glitter. I'm also going to be using some of those um, little glass beads, the fish tank pebbles, I think they're called, just mixed in with it. It's just a really simple layer, this one. And I'm just going to pour it all in and then we're on to the next one. Right, the last layer, that brown layer, was supposed to be like a layer of soil. 
and the next layer I want to sh show kind of like a different layer of the earth showing kind of min rocks and minerals and so I decided to use some abalone shell which is kind of a real thin layer of abalone which you get for uh, decorating your nails it's nail art stuff that you can get and I just absolutely love it I love it so much and now I've run out so I'm gonna have to get some more so yeah I wanted to use that but I wanted it to be it kind of standing up so you could see it clearly around the outer edge obviously when the pyramids um finished you're just going to be able to see that outside so I didn't want to waste my precious abalone by just sprinkling it in like glitter I wanted it to be kind of standing up so what I decided to do was to wait for that brown layer to be nearly ready but soft enough to push the abalone in and then push it in and I did that all the way around so that it would be standing up ready for the next layer a few hours later it was time for the next layer and that was going to be a clear resin because I didn't want to hide any of the, those lovely pieces of shell so I kept it clear so that the light could shine through it nicely uh, what you won't see on here is that I actually added some more um, I felt like there just wasn't enough of the abalone so I added a little bit more and I also added some of those little I don't know what they're called they're like little holographic flakes which I think they're also for nail art and I just found them in the drawer um, so I just shoved those in to fill it out a little bit to add a little bit more interest and yeah you didn't see me do that but that's what I did and you can see again I've forgotten to I'm just too eager to get on with things sometimes I forget to uh, warm the resin first and I forgot so you can see how bubbly it is so what I did was I got my torch and I gave it the quickest of blasts with the torch every few seconds like every 10 seconds or so I kept blasting it with the torch it needs to be like split seconds do you see how quick and then you're not going to melt the bottle because the last thing you want to do is melt that bottle just yet that comes later right that resin's cured and you can see now I did get a little bit carried away with those extra flakes but it did make it a little bit more interesting now it's time to check that my battery pack will fit in the bottle because I remember from the last one that I did like this that it was a bit of a squeeze so what I'm doing is I'm sticking it in now while the bottle is still bendy so that you know before any more resin goes in and I can move I can shape the bottle a little bit so that that battery pack goes in nice and flat like I mentioned before I didn't want it sticking in long way lengthways I wanted it to lay flat on the top of the oh, well on the bottom of the pyramid so that's what I'm doing now so it distorts the bottle now before the resin goes in right the next layer is the simplest one so far all it is is uh, rose gold in with the resin and I did that because I thought the, the pinky colour would go really nice with that wintry colour scheme we've got going on with the white and the pastely blue I just thought that pastely goldy pink would go really well with those colours so yeah it's not a layer of the earth I, so far I've been doing the different layers of the earth but I decided to use my artistic license and just shove some pink in there right once it's completely cured and it does need to be really hard and you know solid before you do this bit is to take the bottle out and what I'm doing is just trimming around the edges first I did try heating it before I trimmed it but it wasn't it wasn't having it at all so the best way to do it is what I'm doing now trim the edges and then you get your heat gun and put it in in the cavity and get it good and hot and the bottle will start to melt and peel away from the sides make sure you open your window uh, as with when you're using resin always have the window open and as much ventilation as you can 
Once the bottle's out, you might have some cling film or glue still stuck in the bottom. So get your heat gun back in there and melt that glue. You might need to scrape it a little bit with just a lollipop stick and then it'll all just come out eventually. But it did take me a few minutes to get that cling film out. The next step is to prepare the lid which will cover the cavity at the bottom and it'll be nice and neat underneath and I designed the lid so that it just snaps on and off easily with magnets there's no hinges or anything like that it's just magnetic and it works really well but that process needs to be done now because the magnets need to be stuck onto the previous layer of resin that we've just done the pink layer the magnets will need to be stuck on there before we put the final resin, layer of resin over the top to seal them in. Right, these magnets which I use are super, super strong and they've got a mind of their own when you're working with them. So what I like to do is mark the ends of what the top four magnets on one end of the tower with just a spot and then on the other end of the tower I like to mark the top four with a stripe and the reason I do that is so that I don't get mixed up when I'm putting the magnets onto the resin they will all be the spot or the stripe and then the magnets into the lid will be the other one so that I know that the magnets are going to attract to each other because obviously if you put magnets with the um, repel, the repelling side facing each other, they're not going to stick to each other. So that's why I mark the magnets first. I know I'm waffling a little bit, but I'm <laughs> trying, really trying hard to explain that. Right, so I've cut the shape of my lid with some thick cardboard and I've cut the holes in the lid with my cropper dial, which is just a big fancy hole punch but you can use whatever you've got the hole punch actually doesn't make the uh, holes quite big enough so I'm just using a tool just to stretch those holes out a bit and the magnets are going to be placed into that but before I put the magnets in I'm using it as a template to mark the placement of the where I need to stick the resin stick the magnets on that layer now I'm just going to stick the four magnets on with the super glue and making sure that the whichever symbol I've drawn on the magnet, they're all the same and they're all facing upwards. Right, to finish off the lid, I've got some sticky back plastic. It's actually Fablon, that. it doesn't matter what you use as long as it covers it up. And some sticky backed felt, which is for the underside, the side that will come into contact with whatever surface you're placing your pyramid on and it stops it from scratching any surfaces. I decided to cut a second square of cardboard for the lid to go underneath because I found that the when I put the sticky back plastic on the magnets were leaving a mark on the plastic and I didn't like it I'm too much of a perfectionist so I took it all to bits and then I decided to have a double layer of cardboard and I'm just using a very old glue stick, which has gone very gloopy, as you can probably see. But it doesn't matter because it still sticks. And I'm going to stick the two together. I've put the magnets into the holes on that first bit of cardboard. So then it will just need covering up with the fablon and the felt. Before you pour your final layer to cover those magnets up, you need to just tape around the inside of the cavity to make that barrier with the... I've used aluminium foil, but you can use whatever tape you like as long as you know it's going to stop the resin. And then add your resin over the magnets and it's done. Done. 
Demoulding these projects has got to be the most exciting thing for an artist. I think you'll probably agree if you've done this before. It's so exciting, especially when you've spent days and days and you just want to know what it looks like. So, yeah, I was really excited and I couldn't wait. So I, I've, I did it at night time, so the lighting's not as good as it could be. But, yeah, there we go. It's out. And I was so pleased with it. I really was. I think it turned out really well. I'd love to know what you think, so please let me know what you thought of the tutorial and what you think of the finished piece. So here we have it in all its glory. I really don't think I'll be parting with this one. I'm so pleased with it, but I'm going to make some more. Um, and when my website's all up and running, and I know I keep saying it, but it's really causing me some trouble. <laughs> anyway, when I've got my website up and running, I will hopefully have some more of these made and for sale in my shop. So let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video and you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'd like to. And ring the bell as well, and then you'll get your notifications if, you, if I upload something new, which I will because I always do. And yeah, let me know what you think. All your lovely comments, they help me so much and give me so much more confidence to carry on making these videos. So thank you to everyone who's already left comments for me in the past. It means so, so much to me. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.